In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of atoms. Some of this you might be familiar with from earlier classes. Some of it may be new to you, so we're just going to go over it. So let's talk about the subatomic particles. First of all, think about what sub means, like submarine, underwater. Subatomic means smaller than an atom. So those are things like protons, which are abbreviated with a P with a plus, uh, because they have a positive one charge, and they have a mass of one AMU, and AMU is an atomic mass unit, and that is a chemistry unit that is used, uh, was made up to describe the mass of a proton. An electron is abbreviated with an E minus, the minus, because it has a negative one charge, and it has a mass of about 0 .0005 AMU. Now, I don't really need you to know the exact mass of an electron, but what I do need you to know that is that in terms of its mass, it is much, much smaller than a proton. Uh, it's very, it's, it's almost negligible when you consider the mass of an atom. The electrons are really tiny compared to the mass of the whole atom. With neutrons, neutrons are abbreviated N0 because they have no charge, they're neutral, and they have a mass of 1 AMU. And hopefully you guys can remember uh, from back in your earlier science classes that protons and neutrons are in the nucleus and that electrons are around outside the nucleus. So you may have seen an atom represented this way. That probably looks familiar to you, protons and neutrons in the middle, electrons around here on the outside on these little orbits. Unfortunately, that is not correct. It's very simplified, and when you were in middle school, it made sense to explain it to you that way, but an orbit is really too specific when we talk about where the electrons are. We, we now will, are going to learn about electrons being located in orbitals, which are not defined little circles like that. And so it's just like when, you're, when your teacher taught you this, they weren't lying to you, but you really can't teach calculus to a baby. They don't have the uh, mental capabilities, the academic capabilities to pick that up. It's the same way with trying to teach you what I'm going to teach you now. So the current electronic model is called the electron cloud model. And what it is is you can see in the center that the nucleus is very tiny. You can see 10 to the negative 13th centimeters, very, very small. And then around the outside, you can see these different shaded areas. The more shaded it is, uh, the more likely there is to be an electron there. The lighter and lighter and lighter it gets, the less likely there is to be an electron there. And then you can see that the size of a typical atom is about 10 to the negative 8 centimeters. So in comparison to the size of the atom, the nucleus is much smaller. So the nucleus is just really tiny and has all the protons and neutrons. It's very dense because we just talked about the fact that the mass of the proton and the mass of the neutron are 1 AMU. The mass of an electron is about 1 2,000th of that. So most of the mass of the atom is in the nucleus. And then the rest of the atom is just empty space. And so there's empty space there, and the electrons just move around in that empty space. There aren't really specific orbits. You know, we think about the planets orbiting around the sun. They have a defined path. The electrons are just moving around in that empty space. So the cloud shows us the likelihood that we will find an electron in a given place. So again, where it's darker here, closer to the nucleus, much more likely to find an electron than you are way out here. And when you think about the size of an electron, versus, or this, I'm sorry, the size of the nucleus versus an atom, think of the nucleus as a little green pea, and uh, you've all probably had peas with dinner, and put it in the center of our football stadium. The edge of the atom would be out at the ed edges of the stadium. So the, the nucleus is really tiny in comparison, and those electrons can move great distances from that nucleus. Let's talk about how we describe atoms. You probably recognize this as a box from your periodic table. Every element has its own atomic number, and the atomic number is at the top of the block on the periodic table. And we call the atomic number Z, and it tells us how many protons an atom has. And so 
Once we know the number of protons something has, we know what it is. So gold always has 79 protons. Anything that has 79 protons, we always call gold, regardless of what changes. And we'll talk about some of those things that can change. It defines an element, the, the atomic number or number of protons. It's kind of like the DNA. It defines exactly what it is. Now, let's talk about the relationship between protons and electrons. Protons and electrons, when we have an atom that has no charge, if protons have a plus one charge and electrons have a minus one charge and there's no charge on a neutral atom, then the number of electrons has to equal the number of protons. And it's a neutral atom, so pluses and minuses are equal. If an atom has a charge, it's called an ion, and that results from an imbalance between the protons and the electrons, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. If we have a positively charged ion, that's called a cation. And if you think about it, if you write the T, it almost looks like a plus, so cation is positive, and negatively charged ions are called anions, so A for A, N for negative, Ions. So cations are positive like the T, and negative ions are a negative ion, anions. And then when we talk about an ion, it also changes the name. When we talk about iodine, that is the neutral atom. When we talk about the iodine ion, we call it iodide. That's how we recognize that it has a charge. And so when you hear about things like sodium chloride, chloride is an ion. Let's talk about how atoms do become charged. So it, it's that imbalance in the protons and the electrons. Now, we just talked about the fact that protons define what an element is. So they can't really change. The only way that the charge of an atom can change is that if the number of electrons changes. Protons are really down deep in the nucleus, and so it's really difficult for those to change. And so the electrons are out around in the cloud. It's much easier for them to change. When you have a positive charge, it means that you have more protons than electrons. And so that means you've lost electrons. If there's a negative charge, it means that you have more electrons than protons, so you've gained electrons. Remember that the protons cannot change. Okay. Here's a little comic relief for you. He's lost an electron, that means he has more protons, the red guy has more protons than electrons, so he's positive. All right, so let's talk about neutrons now. We've dealt with protons and electrons. Imagine three atoms, one, two, three. So as you can see, they all have the same number of protons, the same number of electrons, but they have different numbers of neutrons. First of all, think about what element this is. Hopefully you recognize that with six protons, this is carbon. They're all the same element, but the atoms are different. And when that happens, we call the different elements isotopes. So those are atoms that have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. And you may recognize that isotope, that iso prefix, from the word from biology, remember isotonic, hypertonic, hypotonic. Isotonic means that the concentrations are the same on both sides of the cell wall. Isotope means they have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. So we have to have a way to distinguish between those. And so elements can have different isotopes of the same element. Um, just a reminder to recognize how many, to recognize what an element is, we look at the number of protons and carbon has six protons, so that means that it's carbon. So let's look at these a little more closely. So the mass number is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So if we look at these different atoms, this atom has a mass number of 6 plus 6, so that would have a mass number of 12. Atom 2 has a mass number of 6 plus 7, so a mass number of 13. And then atom 3 has 6 protons and 8 neutrons, and if we add that, that would give us a mass number of 14. So those are different mass numbers. 
and they that's how we can describe that now one thing to be aware of is that not every isotope is represented evenly so it's not like it's one-third atom one one-third atom two one-third atom three it, it is different amounts it's just what's present in the atmosphere and so we deal with that by using what's called an average atomic mass and that's the mass that is on the periodic table and we'll look at that in just a minute so just remember that not every isotope is represented in the same amount um, when we think about carbon 12 it's carbon 12 is kind of what we typically tend to see carbon 14 you may have heard of as used for radioactive dating uh, carbon dating when you hear about that uh, pencil lead which is graphite it's made of carbon it's a mixture of all of those let's look at the periodic table again and we want to see how we adjust for those different isotopes you can see that we use this average atomic mass so this number at the bottom of the little block on the periodic table that's the weighted average of the masses of all the different isotopes of, of that particular element so for gold there are some isotopes that have a mass number of 196 there are some that have a mass number of 197 there may be 195 198 199 but when you add when you take that average atomic mass that's the one that we use when we're looking at atomic masses of elements and you'll hear it called just atomic mass most of the time if you've ever calculated your grades by hand so say in this class you know that tests are a certain percent quizzes are a certain percent homeworks a certain percent when you want to calculate your grade you can figure out what your grade is based on the grades that you've earned and you know that you count a quiz grade as 20 percent a test grade as 50 percent whatever percentage it is and so it's like calculating it by hand it's the same way if we look at the uh, amounts so with the atomic mass if you look at carbon carbon 12 is about 99 percent of the carbon on earth carbon 13 is about one percent carbon 14 has a, a certain amount that tends to be in living things so you just kind of maintain this very small constant amount of carbon 14 while you're li living and eating it goes into plants and animals we eat plants and animals so we constantly have this amount of carbon 14 but when you die it starts to change and by knowing how much is there you can tell how long something has been dead uh, so let's look at how to calculate the average atomic mass just a quick example carbon has two naturally occurring isotopes so carbon with a mass number of 12 is 98.93 percent of the carbon and then carbon with a mass number of 13 is 1.07 percent and this is the carbon kind of in the atmosphere and then if you look at that we're taking 12 amu which is the mass number times 98.93 as a decimal percent as a decimal and then 13 amu times 0.0107 so this percent as a decimal and when you add those together that gives us 12.0107 and if you look at your reference table you'll see that you can find the atomic mass of carbon and it's 12.01 all right so there's some shorthand you need to know there are symbols for this the first thing is X which is the symbol of the element so that goes in the center and then we use a is the mass number that's a superscript remember sub means below super means above so superscript is the mass number so if, uh, in this example we're using carbon and it has a mass number of 13 and then with Z is the atomic number that's the subscript on the left hand side and Q then is the charge so it's left off if there's no charge uh, in this example we've got carbon which has a an atomic number of six and a mass number of 13 and no charge because there's not a number here with the charge there would be a number plus a sign it has to be positive or negative you have to give the charge sometimes you always see just the symbol with a dash and the mass number so you might see it written as C-13 uh, or when we talk about like radioactive carbon dating it's carbon C-14 so let's practice an example of how we figured these things out 
So the first question I'd like you to answer from this, and look at the numbers, look at your periodic table, try to figure it out, pause the video, so answer the questions, and then come back and we'll go through it together. So your first question is, what is the atomic number? Hopefully you remember that the atomic number is this number on the lower left corner. Okay, remember that's called Z. I don't know why it's not A, but it's Z. And so the atomic number is 22. What is the atomic mass? Now, I am willing to bet that many of you put 49, but when it asks for the atomic mass, it wants the average atomic mass, which is the one that is on your periodic table at the bottom. Don't forget to include the unit, AMU. When it asks for the mass number, this is the mass number. This is A, which is the mass number, so that is 49. Protons, remember that protons equal the atomic number, so you always know the protons if you know the atomic number. That's 22. And how many neutrons? Remember that protons plus neutrons equals the mass number. So if that's the case, neutrons, if we subtract protons from both sides, then those will cancel, and neutrons is equal to mass number minus protons, so that's 49 minus 22, which is 27. Now when it asks about electrons, remember that if it's a neutral atom, so there's no charge here, the protons are equal to the neutrons. In this case, because there's a charge, there's an imbalance in the protons and electrons, and this one's a tough one. So if you know that it's positive, you know that it must have more protons. If it has more protons, we know that it has four more protons. So if it has 22 protons and it has four more protons than it does electrons, then we know that that would mean 18 electrons, okay? So that would, we would take 22 protons and then subtract the charge. If you have questions about this, see me in class.